I've been a Capital Radio 604 fan since I was very young, maybe nine years old. And I immigrated to the United States in the mid 90s and I heard by the grapevine in 1996 that Capital Radio had been closed down. So I immediately bought the domain name and put up one picture and the fans grew from there. People sent me stuff from far and wide, got pictures, videos, photo albums, magazines, newspaper clippings, and even recordings of shows from the studio. And one day I was talking to a friend of mine called Michael Jones and started telling him the story about this amazing radio station, what it had done, how it had fought against apartheid by telling the real news, playing the band music, like another brick in the wall by Pink Floyd, for example. And I said to him that I'd love to make a documentary, but of course I am not a documentary maker. I'm not a filmmaker. I am an IT person, a technical person. So I didn't really know how to do it, but I thought I'm just going to do it. Um, my friend ran a one man production company called Q Storm Productions. And so he showed me the ropes, but we started our very first interview was Anthony Duke, who was one of the founding members of the station. He and his daughter Lulu flew out to Philadelphia. We did long interviews and he was the first. So that was, that was five years ago now, or almost six years ago. And, uh, because this was a self-funded venture, it was slow because this was a part-time project and it wasn't free. It cost money, it cost money to, to hire camera people and, um, to fly around and do interviews. So it had to go slow, which is why it took five years in total. I wanted to always make the, the interviews to be on real camera. So even if I was doing a remote interview by Skype or FaceTime, I wanted to have a local camera person there to capture the, the better quality video instead of me capturing it off my Mac and it's coming through compressed. I wanted to have some good quality. So that again was time consuming, planning, money. It, it wasn't free. To have a camera person there to set up but near the end uh, it was getting to the 40th anniversary of the radio station going on the air and i really wanted to get the story out there on the 40th anniversary because the station meant a lot to me and meant a lot to all of the fans who had now gathered over the many years through the website through the podcast on the facebook group there's about 3300 fans there and i wanted to make sure that i did proud by the station and got their story out by the 26th of December, 2019. But to do that, I was now running out of time. And so I started to compromise a little bit and do some interviews via FaceTime and Skype. So I, you'll notice that uh, Alan Kahn's interview is done by FaceTime. And that's just because I simply ran out of time, ran out of money and just had to do it, had to get them on camera. The fan interviews that we had, Neil and Gus, who were the two fans we interviewed again as were done via Skype or FaceTime, I forget now, one of the two. But the video quality was okay and it was only um, a little bit of this content that was not full quality, high quality. Most of it was high quality. Uh, one thing I really liked about the process was that everybody that worked on the station wanted to tell the story. I mean, we had Anthony Duke, a founding member. We had Martin Rattle, again, a founding member, to come along and tell their story on camera, recount, um, go back in time and remember what happened and tell the story. So one of the um, other things that was frustrating for me and not, not being a filmmaker was the ability not to know when to edit. And so Michael Jones, my friend who was, has been doing this forever, uh, forced me to make hard decisions about what to cut. And there were some amazing things I had to cut out, amazing things people told me on camera that were great stories, but slowed down the flow of the, of the storytelling uh, or maybe were not as relevant as they should be. They were just a nice anecdote. And so he really was the iron fist of the editing suite, so to speak. And uh, he, he, if he, if it wasn't for him, the, the documentary probably would have been three hours long instead of two hours long, because I just wanted to go and go and get everything I could on film. It was a frustrating process for me, um, but it was a rewarding one because I, I got to tell the story of this amazing station. And I felt that if I didn't tell the story, it would be lost, lost time. And there would just be rumors and speculation about what happened. Why did the signal not work? 
um, how did the station get set up, why did it get set up. I wanted to have all of that on film, or in this case in video, and I want it to be, to be kept so people can see it in the future, even after I'm gone and all the people who worked on the station are gone. So there, there will be a copy of this video, this documentary around so people can look at it and remember the station and know the true story of the station. So I hope you enjoy the documentary and um, hopefully you get to understand what these, this ragtag team did to bring this amazing radio station to us to tell us the real news, to play the band music, to take on the government and, and let people start thinking that this is not right and we should do something about it. And uh, also just in the process, changing the whole way that radio was done professionally in South Africa.